the bullish engulfing, the bearish engulfing, the hammer, the shooting star, the evening star, the harmony, the flag, all of these different types of candlesticks exist. Now, while some of them might not be clear to you, that's what this video is exactly about. I'm going to review every single one of them to the T and give them their purpose and why they do this pattern. All of these different lines, colors, shapes, patterns are all going to make sense in this video. Because all of these patterns and these shapes in the charts, they're more than just lines or colors on the charts. These are actual movements that happen time and time again because of other traders and you can actually capitalize off of them. And in this video, I'm not going to only tell you how to recognize them so you can see them in the charts. I'm going to actually tell you like how the fuck they work and you can use them to your advantage every single time. So with no further ado, let's get started. But wait, before we get started, out of all of these patterns that I'm going to teach you, you don't need to use every single one of them. I'm going to teach you so you know what they are, but all you have to do is master about five to 10 of them. And that's all you need to be successful. I will be pointing out the ones that I use every single day to be successful and the ones that you will not need to use. I'm going to still teach you what they are and how they're able to be used. And you can learn from them just so you have the peace of mind and you know what they are. So when you see them in the charts, you can identify them and not know what they are, but just know that you don't need them to be a profitable trader. So with that being said, let's begin. So first things first, what is a candlestick pattern? So understand that charts are made up of different types of movements. There can be a line chart, there can be a bar chart, mostly known as the candlestick chart. So all of these red and blue boxes or black and white boxes, you can change the colors however you want with lines at the top and lines at the bottom. These are called candlesticks because you see that little line at the top of the body of the box. That's where you're supposed to light the candlestick. So obviously the candlestick come out when you take that to the charts, it looks like that on obviously the chart. So the candlesticks are called candlesticks because they look like candlesticks. So you have to keep in mind, obviously the larger the candlestick, the bigger the move, the smaller the candlestick, the smaller the move. Each and every single piece of information that the candlestick is giving you is to your advantage. If the candlestick ends up with a big body, it means something. If the candlestick ends up with a small body, it also means something. And if the candlestick has no body and it's just a line and a little box, that also means something very effective. So in other words, when you're identifying candlesticks, you have to understand that every single box, every single line means something whether it's towards the favor of your potential trade or towards it is against it. So you have to make sure that you read it the right way. And keep in mind, these candlesticks happen across different time frames, and they have the same type of look, but they have different types of effect. But we'll get into a little bit more of that later in the video. So up to this point, you understand that it's necessary to learn how to read exactly what each candlestick means. So let me get into the first example of what is known as the long day. So pretty self-explanatory. It's when a candlestick has a long body. This long body is pretty much identifying that this market has a lot of momentum. It is simply showing you that that day's momentum was very strong and that the next day's momentum should continue with that, giving you an indication whether you're in the trade to continue to hold it or if you were about to get into a trade to reconsider it because either the momentum is going in your favor or against it. The most common colors are green and red. So for this video example, we'll be using green and red candlestick examples. And the most common example is obviously a big green candlestick. So that is indicating that the buyers are in the market. And if there is a big red candlestick, that means that the sellers are in the market. This big candlestick is known as the long day. Contrasting with the long day is known as the short day. Same thing as a long day, it's pretty self-explanatory. If there's not a big body or a big wick, this is pretty much called a short day. Also known as choppy market or slow market consolidation, pretty much all the same thing. Sums up what is called a short day because the market didn't move much, which is inevitable. The market some days moves very fast, some days it moves very slow. When you learn how to read that, then you can obviously capitalize off of that. And this pattern is a direct correlation with indecision in the market. The market doesn't know if it wants to continue strong in one direction or if it wants to reverse and go to the other side. So this is a strong indication that the market is undecisive and that it is planning its next move. Next example is the bet hold line. A bet hold line is a simple long candlestick, green for bullish and obviously red for bearish 
opening its low or high and closing near the opposite end of the range. It signifies a potential reversal in the current trend, especially when it occurs after a significant downtrend or uptrend, which is also known as a rejection in the market when you have that big wick. So that means that the candlestick has essentially melted and all that you see is the wick. Obviously on a real candlestick, the line that you burn on fire, it pretty much melts and it breaks off. Here in the market, the candlestick actually went down, but the line stays there as a trail, meaning that this candlestick is now done. So it's rejecting. Moving on now to morning stars. So there's morning star and then there is an evening star. It's pretty self-explanatory. Morning star is pretty much the day is getting started. So everything is up. And that is exactly what the morning star is. The morning star is considered of three different candlesticks. It's considered of one red candlestick, one candlestick that stops, and then one bullish engulfing candlestick. It's pretty much showing a complete reversal now that the market is going to head to the upside. This is personally one of my favorite candlesticks and patterns that I use every single day when I'm interested in buying. And then next we have evening star formation, which is very self-explanatory as well. It's like when the sun is going down, this is a reversal pattern that the market is now is going to head to the downside. It's the same thing as the morning star, but pretty much reverse. It is consisted of a red candlestick that approaches followed by a small rejection, then a bearish engulfing candlestick reversing the market to the downside. This as well is one of my favorite entry signals to enter the market along with my set and forget strategy and everything that I apply with it. These two are one of the most effective and most powerful entry signals that you can possibly ask for. Obviously the time frames gave a big factor into it, but I would definitely write these down and put a star into it because this is what I use every single day in my trading. Followed by the shooting star. The shooting star doesn't quite look like a shooting star, but if you get a little visual with it, you can. So this is a candlestick that appears at the end of an uptrend or a potential end of the, of the uptrend, which it consists of a very small body and a large wick, which is indicating to us that it has no power to continue to the upside and it is rejecting the upside. This is indicating to us that buyers are no longer pushing the market and that the sellers are stronger than the buyers. This is as well as one of my favorite entry signals because if I'm looking for a reversal pattern confirmation, I wanna see that the sellers are no longer winning and that the sellers are now in the market. So the shooting star is my one of my top favorite ones as well. So I would definitely write it down and put a star next to this one. Next we have the two crows. So this is a bearish reversal pattern occurring in an uptrend. It's with a long green candle followed by a similar red candle that opens with the body of its previous candle and closes lower. This pattern indicates a shift from buyers to sellers. Next, we have three inside up and down. So this is actually very simple and it is very effective. We have three inside up. It is a bullish reversal pattern that begins with a large red candlestick, followed by a small green within the body of the previous candle and the third candle that closes above the first candle high. And then we have three inside down, the bearish version that starts with a large green candle followed by a small red candle, and then a third candle that closes below the first candle lows. Next we have three outside up and down, which is pretty much the opposite. Three upside up is a bullish pattern signifying a reversal. It starts with a pair forming a bullish engulfing pattern followed by a third candle closing higher. And then we have three outside down, which is a bearish reversal pattern, beginning with a pair forming a bearish engulfing pattern, followed by a third closing lower. Next, we have three stars in the south, a bullish reversal pattern consisting of three small bodied red candles, each closing lower than the previous one. This pattern suggests a gradual weakening of the bearish trend. And then to add, we have three advancing white soldiers. This pattern is characterized by three consecutive long green candles, each opening with its previous candles bodies and closing higher. It signifies a strong bullish trend to continue heading in that direction. Now we're gonna move on to reversal candlestick patterns. So this next one that I'm going to explain to you is by far my favorite and most effective one. If I can put the top three in my strategy of reversal or continuation patterns, this next one would be number one. So I would definitely write it down and pay attention because this is what I use every single day in the market and it is extremely effective. And that is the famous 
head and shoulders pattern and inverted head and shoulders pattern. So the head and shoulders patterns happens at a high of a trend where you can have obviously what is looked like a potential head and shoulders. It is not confirmed head and shoulders until it does not break and retest the neckline of the actual head and shoulders. So this is consisted of three different peaks, but not all at the same level. The first peak is what is called the left shoulder, has the first initial rejection, where then it gives it the momentum to create the final peak, which is gonna be considered the head. Once the head has completely finished, then we create the third and final peak, which it simply cannot break above the highest peak, which is the head. And then it breaks that neckline, which is called the final right shoulder. And then you have the neckline of the head and shoulders. This is by far one of my favorite and one of my most successful patterns that I use every single day with my strategy. And I personally try to only take a trade that gives me this pattern whether it is a head and shoulders at the upside or whether it is an inverted head and shoulders, which it simply consists of the same things, just simply reversed and flipped around. An inverted head and shoulders considered of three peaks, but at the downside. So the first left shoulder is when price reaches a low point and then it rejects it, which it creates the first inverted left shoulder. And then it creates the lowest point that it can create because this is where it's going to be considered the head. And then once the head has been created, price will then try and create a new low point, but simply can't. And then that is where price is to continue and headed to the upside because it's the reversal pattern. And it's where it creates the left head and then the right shoulder inverted to confirm to us that this market is now going to continue heading to the upside. So it is no longer bearish and now it is bullish. This is what I use every single day in the markets. And these patterns happen more times than you can actually expect. Now, some of them are obviously nicer than others. Others are more visual and you can see them right off the bat. Others are a little bit more complicated. And my biggest tip to you can be is the cleaner, the better. Don't try and force a head and shoulders if it's not there. And if you wanna see a video strictly about head and shoulders, you guys can see this video right here, which explains it into great detail. Next is going to be my second favorite reversal pattern with the candlesticks. And this is actually very effective, but not as effective as the head and shoulders. If I were to grade them, I'd say the head and shoulders has a seven to eight out of 10 effectiveness. And then the next pattern is going to have anywhere from a five to six effectiveness. This next pattern is going to be called the double top and double bottom. So it's actually very simple and it's actually a lot easier to spot than the head and shoulders. It's a little bit more advanced, but this double top and double bottom is very effective because you can use it right away every single day. So the double top is pretty much consisted of a market that reaches a resistance point, then the candlesticks will have a rejection and then price will go right back to that point and then have another rejection. This is where the candlesticks have created two equal points where it pretty much looks like two cones or two triangles at a resistance point. This is what is called a double top. It's where you have two rejections at the same exact point. And the most ideal point where you wanna enter this trade is at the retest of the neckline, just as it is with the head and shoulders. This is very effective and it actually happens more times than the head and shoulders because the head and shoulders is a bit more complex and it requires a little bit more steps, but that's why it is much more effective. The double bottom and double top happen more often, but they're not as effective. So be careful when doing that. And then we have the double bottom, which is pretty much consisted of the same thing as the double top, just reversed on the downside, which is the reversal pattern. So it's when price reaches a low point and then it has a rejection and then it comes right back to that same point and then it rejects once again from the same spot. That is what is called a double bottom and it has the same effective as the double top, but it is simply just a reversal pattern from the downside to head to the upside. Next, we have the triple top and triple bottom. So what you might be thinking, well, is it the same thing as the double top and double bottom? Yes, it just has an extra rejection point, which is even better because this is confirming to you that price is struggling to break through this point. So it is giving you an extra confirmation for you to enter this trade. So the triple top is the same thing as the double top 
but you just add an extra rejection point in it. And the most effectiveness is once it rejects the neckline of the triple top pattern. Now, be very selective with it because this can look a little bit like the head and shoulders if the middle point in the triple top is higher than the two other points. So be very careful with it, but this only helps your trading because it is a stronger reversal pattern. And then obviously if we have a triple bottom, it's the same thing as the triple top, but it is a reversal for the bottom. So it is consisted of three low points that they have rejected. And again, if the middle point is a little bit lower than the two other ones, then you actually have an inverted head and shoulders. And the most effective trade that you can take here is actually at the retest of the neckline. So these three patterns that I have just explained to you right now are the three patterns that I use every single week with my Santa Forget strategy. And they are the ones that I recommend every single time. There are more patterns that I'm going to explain to you in this video that I don't use. I'm just simply going to teach them to you so you are aware of them. If you see them, you know what they are, but you don't need them to be successful. Just know that they are in the markets. They are there, but they are not as effective as these three that I had just explained to you. So these three different patterns I just explained to you, write them down, put a star on it, add them to your notes. They are extremely effective and it took me about four years to master. So the sooner you get it, the better you start getting results. Next, we have the hammer and the inverted hammer. The hammer is pretty much a bullish reversal candlestick that happens at the bottom of a downtrend categorized by a small body and a long lower wick which is resembling a hammer. You can pretty much grab it and hit something with it. Also the reversal of a shooting star. And then you have the inverted hammer, which is also a bullish reversal pattern. It appears as the bottom of a downtrend and as a small body and a long upper body wick. To add to that, we have the hanging man and the shooting star. I know we spoke about the shooting star up above, which it was actually noted because it is one of my favorite rejection patterns, as well as the hanging man, which is pretty much the opposite of it. The hanging man is a bearish reversal pattern that appears at the top of an uptrend and it looks like a hammer, but occurs in a different context. And then a shooting star is a bearish reversal candlestick at the bottom of an uptrend with a smaller lower body and a longer upper wick. Moving on now to my, I think, top two, top three confirmation entry signal is going to be the bullish and bearish engulfing candlestick. So I would have the morning star as my first one, and then I would have my bullish and bearish engulfing candlestick as my number two. So what is the bullish and bearish engulfing candlestick? It's actually very simple and very self-explanatory. When something is engulfed, that means that it is bigger than the previous. It is eating the last subject. Well, that is exactly what is happening here with this candlestick. The bullish engulfing candlestick is pretty much eating at least a minimum of the last two candlesticks. And this can happen at a support level or as a continuation pattern. And then the bearish engulfing candlestick is pretty much when the bearish candlestick eats the last two confirmations. Now, be very selective with this type of confirmation because it can look very similar to the morning star and the evening star formation. It is very, very, very similar and it is not anything bad. If you have a morning star or if you have a bullish engulfing or if you have an evening star or if you have a bearish engulfing, it simply is only going to make your trade better. It's only going to make you more confident taking this trade. This is simply just so when you're taking your trades and you're writing down your confirmations for accountability and when you're reviewing your trades, you see if you take more of morning star or if you take more of bullish engulfing candlesticks, but you shouldn't avoid taking a trade because you don't have one or the other. Again, this is there's a reason why both of these are part of my top two on my set and forget strategy simply because of how effective they are. I use them every single day and I will not take a trade if I don't have either a bullish engulfing or a morning star formation or if I don't have a bearish engulfing or an evening star formation. It's only going to make your trade better and the only reason you should identify them is so when you're, you're reviewing your trades you can identify what you take more versus not. Next we have the Harami candlestick which is obviously used as bullish and it is used as bearish. The bullish Harami is a small green candlestick completely contained with the body of the previous large red candle indicating a potential bullish reversal. And then a bearish Harami is pretty much the opposite where a small red candle is contained with a large green candlestick signifying a potential bearish reversal. Next we have the piercing line and the dark cloud over. A piercing line is a bullish reversal pattern at the end of a downtrend, starting with a long red candle followed by a long green candlestick that opens lower but closes above the midpoint of the first candlestick's body. 
Then we have the dark cloud over, which is pretty much the opposite. It's a bearish reversal pattern at the end of an uptrend, which starts with a long green candle followed by a long red body that opens higher, but closes below the midpoint at its first candlesticks body. Next, we have tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms. So I actually use these in my strategy, but not as much as the other ones that I have explained, but they are effective. Tweezer top is a bearish reversal pattern characterized by two or more consecutive candles with similar highs, indicating a potential reversal from an uptrend. And then a tweezer bottom is the bullish counterpart with two or more consecutive candles with similar lows, suggesting a reversal from a downtrend. Next, we have continuation patterns. Now, some of these consist of what are called trend lines. I strongly am against trend lines simply because I believe they are subjective. I don't think something that somebody can see a certain way and use a certain way can be considered successful or profitable because everybody looks at it different. I think something that is successful and profitable is I give you a system, you apply it and it is the same for everybody and you use it the same way. So when it comes to some of these patterns, I personally don't like them, but I'm just going to bring awareness to them to you. So first up, we have the bullish flag which pretty much forms during a strong upward trend and appears as a small downward sloping triangle, which is known as the flag, following by a step rise in price, which is the flagpole, and it suggests a continuation of the bullish trend. So you'd expect a breakout of this to have the continuation of it. But again, a little subjective because they're trend lines. And then next we have the bearish flag, which it is the inverse, forming during a strong downwards trend and it appears as a small upward sloping triangle after a sharp decline, indicating the continuation of the bearish trend. Next we have what are called pennants, bullish and bearish pennants, obviously. A bullish pennant resembles a small symmetrical triangle and appears during a step upward trend. It suggests that the bullish trend will likely to continue. And then we have a bearish pennant, which occurs in a downward trend resembling an upside down symmetrical triangle. It indicates the continuation of a bearish momentum. Next, we have rectangles, which are actually my favorite, which they're considered also consolidation breakouts, which is a bullish or a bearish rectangle, which are kind of the same. A bullish rectangle formed by two parallel horizontal lines acting as the support and the resistance during the bullish trend. If you want to know more about support and resistance, you guys can see this video right here, which it explains everything to the detail of how I use support and resistance every single day. So after the support and resistance is identified as a bullish trend, indicating that the upwards trend is likely to continue after the period of the consolidation. It's pretty much a break and retest strategy to continue to the upside. And then we have a bearish triangle, which is actually the same exact thing as the bullish one. We're just expecting a breakout of this box to actually happen to the downside. These are my favorite type of breakouts with these patterns because it is the most simplest and not only the most effective, but is actually the most legit simply because it's just a box. It is called the box because you just get one tool and you can see the box visually right in front of you. Not saying you don't see a triangle in front of you, but I don't think it's as clear, as effective as the consolidation box simply will. Next, we have the ascending triangle, which is categorized by a flat upper trend line and an ascending lower trend line. It's typically bullish and suggests a breakout upwards. And then next we have a descending triangle, which features a flat lower trend line and a descending upper trend line. The pattern is typically bearish, indicating a potential downward breakout. And then we have a symmetrical triangle formed by a converging upper and lower trend lines. This pattern can tilt either way and suggest a breakout in the direction of the prevailing trend. Next, we have the famous rising and falling wedges. I use these at the beginning of my trading, but I found no success in it, so I don't use them, but I'm here to explain to you what they are. A rising wedge is a bearish pattern formed by a converging upward trend line. Despite rising prices, the narrowing of the pattern suggests weakening bullish and momentum and a potential bearish reversal. And then we have a falling wedge, which is the complete opposite, which is a bullish pattern with a converging downward trend line. And this is where price pretty much slows down, indicating a weakening in a bearish trend and a potential bullish reversal. Next, we have a on neck in neck. A on neck line is a two candle bearish pattern in a downward trend where the second candle opens with a gap down but closes near the low of the previous candle, indicating a continuation of a bearish trend. 
Then we have the in neckline, which is similar as the on neckline, but the second candle closes slightly in the body of the previous candle, still signaling a bearish trend continuation. Then following, we have a thrusting line, a bearish two candle pattern in a downtrend. The second candle opens within the body of the first, but closes more than halfway into it, reinforcing the continuation of a bearish trend. Next, we have what is called the neutral or undecisive candlesticks, which are also known as dojis. So we've actually seen dojis earlier in the video, and they're actually very effective, along with a bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, a morning star, evening star, and multiple other candlestick patterns. But the dojis alone, they are also extremely effective and can be capitalized every single day in the market. Now, sometimes you have to know when to be away from them because they're just undecisive, which is what dojis are, and they can pretty much slow down your trade, whether you are in it or whether you are looking to get into it. And they can also continue your trade, whether you are in it or looking to get into it. So dojis are very, very effective, but you have to be very, very careful with them. Depends on what they are telling you. So let me explain. First off, a standard doji is characterized by a very small or non-existing body indicating a balance between the buyers and sellers. It reflects indecision in the market. Now, when you have this type of candlestick on a higher time frame, the more careful you have to be. You're not supposed to like indecisive markets simply because they can slow down your trade or they can simply not let you get into the trade because the market is simply not moving enough. I've seen these dojis, these standard ones, these undecisive that they have gone for weeks at a time, weeks where the market is at the exact same point. Does it move up? Does it move down? It only moves up and down enough to create the doji. It's actually very useful because by you seeing this, you're like, well, I don't want to be involved in a market that is not going to have any momentum. So you simply step back and get away from it. So this is very useful for you to learn. Next, we have the long ledged doji, which is similar to the standard doji, but with the longer wick suggesting a greater level of indecision and a struggle between the bulls and the bears. So it is the same exact thing as the standard one, but just the wicks are a lot bigger, which it can actually even be more dangerous because out of nowhere, you can have a breakout to one side or a breakout to the other side. So I personally just stay away from any of these indecision candles because there's no momentum in them. You don't want to enter a market that has no momentum. Same way as if you were to be a surfer, you don't want to go surf out there in the ocean if there's no waves. Your job as a surfer is to go surf. You want to get on a big wave so it rides you all the way to the shore. You don't want to just be sitting there in the ocean waiting for a shark to come attack you. Well, these candlesticks, if you enter a trade when there's no volume in the market, you're just kind of getting asked to get eaten by a shark or obviously getting your stop loss to get hit. So kind of stay away from these candlesticks if you're not gonna use them to have as a reversal confirmation, which we'll explain a little bit more of that later in the video. Then we have the Dragonfly Doji, which has a longer wick and no upper wick. This resembles a T. It occurs when the open is high and the closest price are the same, signaling potential bullish reversal in the downtrend. And then we have the Gravestone Doji, this is the inverse of the dragonfly with a long upper wick. It indicates a potential bearish reversal in an uptrend. Next, we have a spinning top, which is a candle with a small body and a relatively long wick on both ends, which it signifies at the end of the day indecision, neither buyers or sellers. It could gain to the upper side or it can gain to the downside. This often happens during periods of a consolidation, which is actually very, very similar to the standard doji, which is called spinning top, standard doji. It's kind of all the same thing. And at the end of the day, they all look the same and they all mean the same thing, which is undecision. So don't get confused out there and don't get sold different types of candlesticks or different types of strategies based off of these candlesticks. No, at the end of the day, they are all the same exact thing. They are indecisive candlesticks. What are they doing? They're not doing anything. So you can't build the strategy off of nothing. Now, yes, you can use them as a confirmation that it is having indecision at a resistance level or at a support level and that it is rejecting it. And then you can enter the trade then. Now, yes, but you cannot confirm that without having other pieces of a strategy that lead you to that point. You simply can't just trade these candlesticks alone. You need to have a strategy behind that. 
Next, we have one of my favorite continuation candlesticks, which is a Marabuzu candlestick. Now, this is actually a very powerful candlestick, and you rarely see in the markets on the higher time frames, simply because of its strength and how effective it is. A Marabuzu candlestick is consisted of one big block. That's it. No wick at the top, no wick at the bottom. Meaning from the moment the market opened, it just went all the way up and then it closed. There was no fluctuation. Price didn't have a wick. Price, the sellers couldn't, you know, pull the market back, nothing. Now this Marabuzu is a bullish Marabuzu and then it is a bearish Marabuzu. It happens to the upside, it happens to the downside. It is stronger on both sides. And it is very, very key for continuating your trade, whether you're already in it, this gives you more indication to hold it. And then if you're looking to get into a trade, well, get in soon because the momentum is clearly there with this candlestick. Now, I'm gonna stop it right here because I can actually go for hours on all different types of candlesticks, patterns, formations, reversal, continuations. There is a bunch of different types of languages when it comes to these type of candlesticks. And there's hundreds of traders out there that have pretty much created these random names and given two or three candlesticks their own name and they've called it their own. Now, that is the freedom of trading and, the op and just shows you the amount of opportunity that is out there. But that doesn't mean that you have to know every single one of them. You only need to know a very selective amount of them for you to be successful and have effectiveness in trading with these patterns. You don't need to know every single one of them. Simply like when you go to college, you don't have to know every single lecture, every single curriculum. You kind of just have to go through it so you can get the degree and then you can go affect, uh, you know, go apply it to your job and be effective. But you don't ever really use it. You just kind of have to go through it. It's kind of the same thing here in trading. You kind of have to know about it so you're aware of it. It's in your niche. It's going to be part of your day to day. But you will never use it. And the sooner you learn that, the sooner you will start making money because you will only apply what works. Remember, it's not about working hard. Working hard is cool at the beginning, but then it's about what is working smart. And how do you work smart? Well, you work smart by knowing what works and then simply just focusing on that alone. So for example, if I've already told you that the bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing works, stick to that. If I've told you the morning and evening star formation works, stick to that. The double top, head and shoulders, triple top, those are the most effective candlestick patterns that you can see happen in the market. Now, is there others out there? Yes, but are they effective? No. I have tried this by myself for years and I tried to find effectiveness and it is simply does not work. And that is why students that use the set and forget strategy and they follow all of these types of patterns, they make anywhere from a thousand to a thousand five hundred dollars a week as a beginner set and forget trader. If you want to know more about what set and forget is, simply click the link in the description below and I have a video there for you that explains to you exactly what it means. Because trading goes a lot further than these candlesticks. These candlesticks are the simple language that the the market is giving you. But now how do you continue a conversation in this language? How do you know when to interrupt the sentence? How do you know how to continue a sentence? Well, that is where the following piece of the strategy comes in, which is called set and forget. And that is where it lets traders make anywhere from a thousand to a thousand five hundred dollars a week as a beginner set and forget trader. So you want to know more about it? Click the link in the description below there. I have a video for you that's going to explain everything and what we are about. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.